Magic the Gathering is widely seen as the first trading card game. Given its age, some of its mechanics and rules are beginning to look a little long in the tooth. Its combat system is a bit slow and overly prone to stalls, its card economy is comparatively stingy, and its resource system can be frustratingly random. Yet, Magic continues to outsell its newer and often sleeker trading card game competition. There's a couple of different reasons for this, ranging from its large enfranchised player base to its traditional fantasy aesthetic, but one aspect I feel doesn't get enough recognition for Magic the Gathering's ongoing success is something that is so obvious it's easy to miss. Magic the Gathering is a trading card game that supports multiplayer. The Yu-Gi-Oh! anime especially really reinforced the idea that trading card games were an intense, strategic 1v1 battle between two players. Trading card game tournament structure would largely reinforce this. From the local game shop level right up to the world championships, 1v1 is the main format of gameplay. And as those fans of Yu-Gi-Oh! and competitive players of other games went on to craft TCGs of their own, their core focus was on improving on MTG's rather notable flaws in the 1v1 experience. And to be fair, a lot of these games did succeed in that. But in doing so, they've largely forgotten that sometimes people hang out in groups of more than two people. There's nothing stopping a larger group from playing a bunch of separate 1v1 games, of course, and this works out just fine in more formalized competitive settings, like tournament nights at your local game store, or even smaller tournaments like a draft among friends to celebrate a new set's release. But in gatherings of four, five, or six people, Oftentimes, you're not going to be looking to immediately silo everyone off into separate corners to play a bunch of 1v1 games. Sometimes, players just want to play a casual game while socializing. And in this very common scenario, there's not a whole lot of trading card games to choose from. Magic the Gathering has often mentioned that the majority of their sales do not come from the players that invest heavily in organized play. Although they will certainly spend more on an individual level, in terms of the raw numbers, they are outweighed by the kitchen table, or more casual players, who play almost exclusively in more casual settings. And in these casual settings, being able to get everyone present in on the same game is a huge advantage. One additional advantage of multiplayer gameplay, beyond just getting everyone in the same room into the same game, is that it also acts as a skill leveler. In 1v1, the difference between a tuned, tournament-ready competitive deck and a more casual deck is often insurmountable. But, even the very best decks are going to struggle facing two or more opposing decks at the same time. So, if one player in multiplayer takes too obvious a lead, other players are then able to target them and knock them back into roughly the same level of development as the rest of the table. This is really good, since it lets less invested players still play the same game as players that have dropped hundreds of dollars and hours of study time on their deck. In 1v1 settings, these less invested players would most likely just lose constantly until they either decided to cough up way more money and invest significant time studying the metagame, or, more likely, is simply going to quickly burn out of the game and not even bother. One thing that is noteworthy about Magic the Gathering is how easily it integrates its multiplayer support into the game. It can disguise how tricky it is actually building a multiplayer function into a trading card game can be. On the surface, all that's really needed for this integration is a small terminology change. Instead of effects targeting your opponent, you can have effects that target an opponent, or each opponent. In single-player games, these are all functionally the same. The only time you really notice this difference is in multiplayer games. However, terminology is not the only aspect to consider when implementing multiplayer into a game. The rules and their effect on the pace and development of gameplay is also a very important consideration, and in this context, several of Magic the Gathering's weak points in 1v1 actually become advantages in multiplayer. In many games, where combat is much more precisely paced, a single attack on one player will often break open that player's defenses, which in a multiplayer game will lead to a dogpiling of all subsequent players, quickly overwhelming that player and knocking them out of the game immediately. For a couple of different examples, consider using cards in hand to guard attacks in Vanguard, leaving you with no cards in hand to guard a subsequent attack, or using removal to open lanes in Wacross, leaving those lanes open for further attacks down the road. Defenses in these games are carefully calibrated to function against a single opponent with two players alternating turns back and forth. And these systems would basically start to fall apart in any attempt at multiplayer without substantial supporting rules. In Magic the Gathering, however, players give up their available defenses when they attack, 
leading to a slower and more easily stalled game in 1v1, but also discouraging aggressive swings and early dogpiling in multiplayer matches. This helps to substantially even out the pacing of gameplay in these multiplayer matches. Magic's slow and somewhat clunky card economy also helps reduce the complexity of boards to a more manageable level when dealing with multiple players, while also dragging down the pacing yet again to give players a little bit more time to develop their boards at a more natural rate. The random resource system is definitely still frustrating though, and I think that's why lands is the most common element of Magic the Gathering's gameplay that players will complain about, rather than a perhaps slightly clunky combat system and a slow card economy. Magic the Gathering's pattern of gameplay, which involves a slow buildup, incremental chip-ins for damage while managing opposing threats with removal, before launching a large swing-out for game can be admittedly pretty awkward in 1v1 formats but it is very well suited to multiplayer gameplay. In many cases, as other TCGs try to improve their core 1v1 gameplay, they do so at the direct expense of factors that would support their game in a multiplayer context. And in a world of many 1v1 TCGs, but very few multiplayer TCGs, this is a very real trade-off that I think more new TCGs should be taking a serious look at. Games may have to make some design concessions to allow their rules to support multiplayer as an option, but given the large casual audience out there who could potentially enjoy TCG gameplay just at potentially a lower cost, this may be a worthwhile trade-off, especially for new TCGs searching for a supportive audience. Best of luck either finding or designing a game that supports playing with a large group of friends, and have a fantastic day.